Hey, I am back with another board game makeup. Today I'm going to do makeup inspired by Bobble King by Haba. It is a children's game, uh, but I do have children in my life, so my three-year-old niece absolutely adores this game. We have fun playing it with her, so I thought I would mix it up a little bit. It is two to four players. It does not take very long at all to play, 15, 20 minutes maybe. On Board Game Geek, on a scale of one to 10, it has a 5.8 rating. I personally have it rated as an eight, just because my ratings are based on did I have fun or not. So, I'm gonna use this really old primer that I got in a birch box I don't know how long ago. Once I finally used it, I discovered that I liked it. And then I tried to buy some and I don't think it was <laughs> available anymore. All right, so the theme of this game is that there's this lion who's King Leo and he guards his huge stash of treasure, but sometimes he it's lazy and tired and he dozes off to sleep. So then we the players, while he's sleeping, are trying to steal the treasure from him. So I'm going to read the little blurb, the little story about the game while I'm putting on my foundation. I do have a couple of little blemishes today, so I'm using this new Tadrina, so I'm using this Neutrogena Skin Clearing Foundation, and I will list in the description all of the stuff that I'm using on my face today and what shades they're in and things like that. Uh, sorry if I keep looking a strange way, that's where my mirror is, and I'm still getting used to this filming thing. King Leo is guarding his huge treasure of valuable silver. Unfortunately, he's somewhat lazy and sometimes dozes off. His napping allows players to attempt to skillfully snatch King Leo's valuable silver nuggets from underneath the board without him noticing. To do this, you need to <laughs> encourage skill and a steady hand. But be careful. If you wobble too much and King Leo wakes up as a result, it can get very uncomfortable. The player who has been caught twice will have rotten tomatoes thrown at them by King Leo's guards and will unfortunately be the loser. The other players can relish their victory in this wobbly test of courage. So this is a dexterity game. And there's a central board that's resting on little wooden tokens that are painted silver. Then on top of the board, you have this wooden figurine of King Leo. All right. Then there's a wooden stick that you pass around to the active players. And whoever's turn it is, they have to try to swipe at least one silver nugget out from under. It can be more. Now you cannot look under the board. You cannot see the silver nuggets. So you're just trying to swipe out as many as you can without toppling the border knocking over the lion. Now when you get those silver nuggets out, the board is lined with circles on the top of it and you have to place those on top of the board then, once again try not to make it topple. You gotta make sure you pick the right place to put them. Pop some concealer under my eyes. So you continue playing around the table like that. Everyone taking turns removing the nuggets and placing them on top of the board until either all of the circles on top of the board have silver on them or if someone tips it over. So if, so if there's no places left to put more silver, then everyone kind of wins that round and you just reset and play another round. However, if someone makes the board tilt or makes the line fall over, 
they take a rotten tomato from the stash and place it in front of them. And if no one has two rotten tomatoes yet, then you reset and continue playing. Once a round ends and someone has two rotten tomatoes, they are the loser of the game. And everyone else wins. So it is a little bit different in the fact that there's multiple winners, one loser. Uh, which I enjoy as a nice change once in a while. So is this a new, innovative, mind-blowing game? Absolutely not. Is it fun? Yes. And that's really why I play. I play to have fun. I have always enjoyed playing games uh, as a child and as an adult. And now that I have a niece and a nephew, I'd like to instill a love for games in them too. So because it is a kid's game, it does have a low rating. Um, most children's games do. So if you go simply off ratings, keep that in mind. Children's games just don't get the high ratings because there's not a lot of game there and a lot of adults don't seek out to play them. I give plenty of children's games very high ratings because my opinion of ratings is did I have fun? Would I play this again? I'm not going to break down and analyze what might be overpowered or what might not work or this game did it was fun to play or it wasn't at the end. Um, so if you're ever checking out my ratings that's what they're based on is how much fun I had. I had a lot of fun with Wobble King so I rated it an 8 out of 10. I've never had a bad time playing it. My niece has never had a bad time playing it. Now sometimes she gets a little sour and <laughs> she doesn't win but I think that's most two and three year olds. Now would I break this out for just an entire table of adults? Probably not. A lot of dexterity games I do. They're fun for adults. This one would be a little lacking if it was only adults at the table. So once my niece and nephew have kind of outgrown it, it probably won't stay on my shelf much longer. But this, among many other hobby games, I do recommend to people looking for things to do with their children. Um, I started playing this one when my niece was two. Um... There's not a lot of strategy or rules there, so you can go a little younger, maybe. Um, the box says that it's for ages four and up. Um, a lot of times the ages on boxes have more to do with the safety testing they have to go through than actual what kids are capable of. Now, I have always loved playing board games, and... Now that I have a niece and nephew, I'm hoping to instill a love of games for them. I think it be, can be very beneficial for children. Not only is it bonding time with the adults in their life, but it makes them feel involved. It tickles money so much that we make a place for her at the table and she gets to play with us. It makes her feel like she's a part of what's going on even though we play something else later that doesn't include her she still had her moment at the table with us rolling dice and moving pieces and making decisions um she tells a lot of people when she meets them that she gets to play games with her aunt and her uncle um i think it's important for children also it can help develop their motor skills their decision making social skills if you're playing with some other people uh, can help them learn to manage some emotions uh, get some aggression out in a healthy way learn how to manage your feelings when things aren't going your way if you're losing um, and if you're looking for more children's games to do that sort of thing I very highly recommend just looking into the hobby game collection. I have not played every single hobby game, but I've not really played a bad hobby game either. 
if you can find them on sale that's great sometimes they can be a little pricey in my opinion but the components are good they are great components it's a lot of chunky wooden pieces nice boards so it just all depends and there are some other ones out there uh reach out to me if you're not finding anything in the hobby collection that you like and i can recommend some others but i always recommend starting with the hobby collection for the kids in your life so that's kind of my feelings about the game and I'm sorry, I feel like I've been blocking my face most of the time with these brushes. I'm going to try to remember to do better. So now where are we going? So now it's basically just to get ready with me, right? Now I'm just going to go on with some powder to set everything. Now I do have plans of doing another video separately of a more in-depth rules video how to play um show you the setup and how the term structure works with the makeup videos i think i just want to kind of give my impression of the games my feelings about it in a general overview and that takes little to no time while i sit here and do my makeup so we're going to talk about other stuff um if you have questions for me I just leave them in the comment and I can work those into future videos as well. It might actually be beneficial so I know what you want to know. It doesn't have to be board game or makeup related. I'm pretty much an open book. Right. Eyebrows. I have a routine that I usually follow of doing my makeup in the same order. But when I'm filming, I'm thinking about other things and then I'll lose track of what I'm actually doing with my face. <laughs> so I'm using this e.l.f. Um, Instant Brow Lift Pencil. And all I'm doing really is just kind of filling in some gaps. Uh, make the ends look a little more thicker. Blend it a little bit. I am very pleased that my eyebrows are actually starting to look like eyebrows again. I think I've probably said this in every video, but in my late teens, early 20s, they were very much overplucked. And they just never seemed to recover. So the past year, I've been really working on trying to get them to come back and shape them and but I'm actually seeing a difference in them. They don't, they don't stop like right here anymore. <laughs> so that's something. Why don't you guys tell me I had stuff all over my shirt? Anyway, so then I usually go in with a brow gel, just to kind of settle them and make sure they stay laying the right way. Oh, ah. Uh -uh. I forgot to use my cheek heat. I've been using a creamy kind of blush before I put powder on. And like I said, I'm all out of sorts because I'm filming and I forgot to put this on. And now I'm afraid to because I've already put powder product on my face. That doesn't always mix well. So maybe I'll remember next time. For powder blush, I'm going to go with my Physicians Formula All-Star Palette and use the Happy Booster. I'm just going to use the other side of the big blushy blush. And I'm sorry I haven't filmed in quite some time. Um, it's just been... A rough year or a couple of years really uh, mentally for me and I've been struggling with my depression I've been depressed since I guess middle school I was diagnosed with it freshman year of college I took an antidepressant for less than a year during that time 
and I, it wasn't helping. So I took myself off of it, which was a terrible experience. That's another story for another day. But I learned how to manage it myself over the years. There's always big highs and big lows, but I figured out what works for me. The past couple of years was a real struggle with that because a lot of what I use to manage my depression was suddenly taken away from me <laughs> with all of the COVID shutdowns and the, yeah. So board games aren't just a fun little hobby for me. They really are my main social interaction that I use to help be mentally stable. <laughs> it helps me be a normal person. Um, because without those social interactions, I tend to fall apart. I tend to just sit in my own head. So I just haven't felt like filming anything. I thought about it a lot. And I just didn't. So now I am. I'm actually currently on vacation from work this week. Uh, it's Christmas week. I usually take time off during this time just because... I love Christmas. We do a lot at my house with my family and I like being available for all of that without having to try to rush and get places and manage the work schedule. I'm going in with this yellow just kind of all over. I'm trying not to get too much of that. Palette does not have a mirror. Yeah, my lippy palette that does. But there's not a lot of color in this game. Uh, artwork. A lot of golds, browns, yellows. Now the piece, the figuring piece of the board in the background is blue and there's some reds but I'm just trying to put down this yellow. It's kind of a small little base for all the other golds I'm going to go in with. I'm not too concerned with getting it extremely coated or Covering every little nook and cranny. Alright. I need to grab a different palette with a mirror. Because that is creamy lip stuff. And I'm afraid it's going to get on my shirt. Alright. Now I forgot to do a couple of things. So I usually highlight under my brows. Go ahead and knock that out. And then before I get too far in the eyeshadow, I'm just going to put some loose powder to catch any fallout that I might have. I don't have my usual brushes right in front of me. I washed my brushes. I haven't got them back in here yet. I'll just do a big old dollop of loose powder right around where I'd would want to catch the fallout. We're in a black shirt for this. Was not ideal. <laughs> now I just have to decide what colors I want to go in with. Um, I chose the Barbarella palette. Because there's a lot of shimmers, a lot of browns and golds. And there is a pop in blue. Because once again, there's a lot of browns and golds in the blue. I just kind of have a general idea in my head of what I want the color scheme to be. But I never really know what I'm going to do or how it's going to turn out until I'm doing it. I think I'm going to go in with... Jason down in my crease. See what that looks like. I think I've used this palette one other time. 
This is going on very smoothly. Very smooth, very blendy. Which I do enjoy. And the fact that the majority of the shades in this palette are shimmer just makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm not a matte kind of person. I'll use them in looks and I'll do a full matte look once in a while. But especially if I'm going to more neutral tones because I'm not bright and a big rainbow because if you know me, <laughs> you know I'm not afraid of uh, being a little bit outrageous with my makeup. Um, since I'm not very colorful, I'm glad to have the shimmer. I have never been boring with my makeup. I went through a phase in middle school when I discovered that white eyeliner exists, but I didn't actually know <laughs> what it was for. So I just wore white eyeliner every day for probably a couple of months. And when I say I wore white eyeliner every day, I mean I wore white eyeliner and only white eyeliner <laughs> on top of the bottom. Didn't matter. <laughs> So I've never been afraid to experiment. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with one that's got a little more, to me, an orange tint too, this Pablo. Uh, Cause they're lying there. Is that just very brown brown? He's a little orangey brown. So I'm gonna go in with this on like the outer half. And I'll take it right up to where I have my brow highlight. It'll kind of mingle together. And just like in my previous videos, my lighting is shit. So I do apologize about that. I'll try to get some closer up stuff when I'm done. So you can see the colors a little better. All right. And then I think for over here, I'm going with this Devor. Daver? I'll say Devor. It's got a little more reddish orange hint to it, which I think looks more like the main. <clears throat> I'll just blend that on over into the left here. My lighting is actually worse than previously because I decided to put up a background. So then it kind of blocked out half of the natural light I had. I don't have that much natural light today because it's cold and dreary. Um, but the background just kind of makes me look like I'm sitting in a cave now. But now you can't see all the dog hair that lives in my bed. That one seems a bit spark, a bit more sparkly than the others. I do like how that's coming out. All right, so now I'm just gonna go back in with that original color I put in my crease, just to make sure I don't lose it. Kind of gets covered up in the fallout of the others. Make sure that still pops out on its own a bit. Now in my inner corner, because I got to have an inner corner pop, I think I'm going to use Jared. So I've pretty much stayed in this area. Nice little color story there. Pop some Jared into my inner corners. So I think I'm done with that part of my eye. So now I will go in that brush I used for that loose powder. Just on that off. I actually didn't have fallout really to speak of from that palette, which is nice. 
So now it's going to get a little crazy looking. I'm going to go in with Dommy, this blue, uh, on my bottom lash line. Uh, because there is blue in the background, but also if you're playing the game, that piece, that lion piece is blue. Blue piece, red stick, rotten tomatoes are red. There's a lot of red and gold on the board. I actually didn't use silver much in this look. There's silver. I mean, you're stealing from the king, but a lot of the artwork is gold. So I've went more of a gold look, but I am going to put some blue and red in here to make it finish matching up and pop just a bit. And just remember, there's nothing wrong or right in makeup. You can do whatever you want. As long as you're having fun and you like it. You don't have to do it for anyone except yourself. If it makes you feel good, then go for it. Doesn't matter what other people think of it. Confidence is a skill everyone should have and work on. I would love to tell you how I have always had such confidence, but I don't really know. I think it was just instilled in me from the love I had of the people in my life and the fact that they encouraged me to do what I wanted to do and they let me have the freedom to choose things and wear things even if they were crazy. I think the rest of it came from my years of cheerleading because standing in front of people, putting yourself out there like that is a different level of confidence. And then I used those skills and other things that in public speaking uh, competitions in high school. I never had a problem with uh, public speaking assignments. So then when I got into the board game hobby, really, it was not a big deal for me to teach games to others. Now, I will say the first time I did it, I was nervous, but I got through it. Um, but it was just because I hadn't done it before. I'd never taught these rules to anybody. But once I got through that one, I knew that I could. I knew it wasn't a big deal. So then I started doing it more often, doing it in more places, doing it at conventions with people I really didn't know. This is how everything is looking before I do the setting spray. I'm going to do my setting spray before I do eyeliner or mascara because I never know if they are going to get runny. Uh, I just have a cheapy setting spray from Dollar General. I've never really found much of a, I've never found much of a difference in setting sprays based on price. Um, I mean, some of them may be more dewy than others, but this one says 24 long lasting wear. I've never kept it on 24 hours, but it gets me through the day just fine. And I like it to dry before I continue. I'm going to line my maybe this won't freak y'all out. I don't really have much of a mirror handy so I'm going to use the camera to do this. I'm going to do my when I say camera I mean phone. All of this is done on my phone. Filming, editing, everything. That's why it's so uh bad. You do not have to do your upper water line. I just think it fills in my sparse little lashes a bit. If you are doing it, I don't recommend poking yourself in the eye with it. I do that all the time. Okay. Sorry about the weirdness. Now I'm trying to decide how red want it to be. I have this big stick. This one, I think this one's a little more brighter. I think with the way the gold colors came out, I don't want it to be so bright. So I think I'm going to use this big stick. 
it's just a multi stick. I think I'm going to use that on the top for the liner. Once again, I'm going to come in real close to y'all and use this as my mirror. All right, so I've pumped that red on top. So I have the red and the blue to tie in all of the not gold and yellow in that game. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my lash line on the bottom. Or my, the, my water line on the bottom. And I think I'm going to use just more blue. I'm going to make the blue pop. I don't really want to bring a lot of black into this look because there's not a lot of black anywhere else. So let me pop on this. Alright, so I pop some more of that blue into my water line. If I've been sniffling through this, I apologize. I don't think about things while I'm filming. <laughs> I just act like I'm sitting here alone in my room. As I normally would. And I apologize. Alright, what else do I need to do? I need to throw some mascara on. And some lashes, highlighter, and lips. So let me go ahead and throw on some highlights. Positions Formula Palette again. And we're going to do the Rose All Day Petal Glow. So we'll go with that golden look. I have a favorite brush that I like to use for highlight. I'm having trouble finding it. There we go. I know I washed one, but I also know that I have two of these. Uh, this is the Luxie 249, and I love this end of it to do highlight with. Don't know why. I just do. If you have any Luxie brushes you want to part with and give to me, I'll take them. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do some highlight right here. Do some highlight right here on my cheekbones, under my eyes. I don't know if that's like, that's probably not my cheekbone. I don't know. Let's put it right here. This area. And then I'll put it on my nose. And I'm going to keep it so... I probably overdo it right here, my cupid's bow, my upper lip, but I just love it so much. It's one of my favorite places to put it. Um, and I'll just put whatever's left on the brush there on the chin. Sometimes I get my chin too shiny, and I'm not a fan of that. Alright, so highlight, um, curl lashes. And then I'm going to pause for a minute because I think I got a message I need to check on my phone. And since I use my phone for everything, I've got to pause this. And we're back. <laughs> Had an update about our blue game meetup this evening. So this is a Milani highly rated mascara. It's a sample size. I got this in some box somewhere. I've got to stop using this as a mirror. <laughs> you guys should yell at me. <laughs> Tell me all the things I should not be doing. Oh, I've got it in my actual hair. I need y'all to tell me what you want me to talk about. Um, sitting here in silence. And that doesn't make for a good video. That's boring. All right, I'm going to try to put on some lashes. Some days it just doesn't work out. Actually, I'm not putting on lashes today. Because I do not have black eyeliner on. And I don't want it to turn into something ratchet looking. So, we're just going with the mascara today. And I don't know why this bottle mascara in the camera right now, from what I can see, looks like it's all over my face, but it's not. Alright, now I've got to do my lips. 
I'm also going to do them red. Red-ish, at least. Mm. I have a lip primer, but I don't think I want to use it. I'm going to do a lip liner. I love lip liner. It actually just makes a pretty good base for whatever you are putting on. You can use it just as lipstick. It's pretty versatile. All right, so I have this palette. It's Bella Pierre Cosmetics. It's lips, creamy lip colors. I've never used this palette. It came in a subscription box. I don't remember which one. So there's actually quite a few good colors here. If I wasn't making this look like the Wobble King, I would actually use this Couture Purple purple kind of color. But since I am going for it to match this game, I need to keep it in the reddish side. So I'm going to go in with this Cherry Pop in the middle here and see how it turns out. Ooh, that's a lot darker than I thought it was. This one is pretty glossy. It's okay. I just don't want to be bright, bright red. I don't like bright, bright red lipstick on me usually. So this one is okay. I'm also just not sure if I'm a fan of this stuff. It's pretty patchy. Alright. So then I think I'm going to go in with the Fierce and kind of mix in with it. Give it some more of this gold. And some of the rest of the look. See if that helps it at all. Okay, I don't hate that gold on it. Still pretty patchy. Okay, so I haven't completed my makeup. I don't have to hold my hair back anymore. Just give it a nice fluff, let it go where it wants. And give you some better views. <laughs> I'm actually getting kind of a 4th of July feel <laughs> looking at it up close like this. So there it is. Wobble King inspired makeup look. See you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, if you want to subscribe while you're here, <laughs> please subscribe. You don't have to. I would appreciate it though. Keep a lookout for more videos.